Finally. Everything is finally completed. Now, I can rest. Ah. Hey! Jeez, what? So, what you doing? I'm relaxing, okay? It's, it's been a very, very long four to six months, and I'm relaxing because I am done working. Now it's done! You should go do some work! Wait, what? Of course! It's time to get up and go! Okay, so what? Ride my bike? No! Sleep? Do that later! Drink heavily? That ain't good for you. Okay, then, then, what, what should I do? It's time to paint some minis. Brilliant. Greetings, welcome back to Mediocre Minis. It's been a bit, but it's really nice to get creating and starting to paint and make videos again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the expansions for Marvel's Crisis Protocol and painting everyone's favorite god of mischief, Loki. 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 I am Loki of Asgard. That's right, we're going to be painting Loki! Yeah, we're painting Loki. To start off painting Loki, I started with a black primer and a light spray of white ink from the top to give a zenithal highlight. While you do not need to do this step, it can help you better understand how to highlight and shadow all the miniatures that you're painting. It can be very useful, of course, for this process later on. With the base coats, I started off with Black Forest Green from Scale 75, mixed with a small amount of Abaddon Black from Citadel. With the cloak complete, I used straight Abaddon Black for the pants, and I later actually used the same black for Loki's hair. The staff, boots, and later gauntlets, I used tarnished brass from Reaper Miniatures. One thing about this paint I've noticed is that it's best to only use small amount of paints at a time on your palette. This is because the, this specific paint tends to separate relatively quickly, and also it can get a little bit gloopy if left out for too long. So it's best to only use a small amount at a time and just reapply it to your palette as you need more. For the chainmail looking shirt, I use Vallejo Game Air Color Gunmetal. It provides some very awesome coverage, is an excellent dark silver to use for metallic surfaces. Even though it is a airbrush paint, it still works just as fine and you can use it with a brush with no problems. Now for all the base coating, I use two, sometimes three thin coats of paint. This is best practice to follow when painting miniatures, as then you can always make sure you remove any brush strokes, don't cover up any small details with your paint being too thick, and it's always easy to apply one additional thin coat of paint so you can make sure everything reaches full opacity and also that you don't cover up anything. So definitely always use thinner coats of paint. Two, sometimes three, always works out for the best. With some of the trim on Loki, I used New Gold by Reaper. Now this gold color is actually relatively thin, so it will take several coats to reach full opacity, sometimes three or even four depending on what the base coat is. But it's still an excellent color of gold if you plan on using it. For the last few areas of base coating, I use Ghost White for some of the fur around Loki's neck and Cadian Flesh Tone for the skin. Honestly, Cadian Flesh Tone is one of my favorite colors to use as a base coat for skin as it works out very, very well and can easily be used uh, as a base coat and highlight relatively easy with other colors. Now before moving on to the highlights and other areas of the miniature, I take a shot at Loki's eyes since the base coat is already down. Normally I'm not very good at painting eyes because it's such a small area, but we decided to take care of it now as touching it up and fixing other areas of the face that the blue spills over is actually relatively easy. Now one way that I avoid in this instance making the eyes look somewhat derpy, I actually just paint them a straight blue. Now this blue is also going to be used later on with the miniature with some of the icy, icy effects at the bottom. 
so this blue will tie in with the rest of the miniature and I don't have to worry about pupils, which is always excellent. So this blue is actually a color from Scale 75 called Mediterranean Blue, and I think it worked out really, really great. So since I wasn't going to add pupils, all I needed was a little bit of touch up around where the eyes were and the rest of the skin, and the eyes were completely finished. Now with the base coat and the eyes completed, it's time to move on to one of my favorite parts of the painting process, the highlights. For all the greens, I used a mix of black forest green, and later on I mixed more and more Iardi green over time. These are both colors from Scale 75. Mixing these two paints together not only helped with transitions from color to color, but also kept me from using too many different colors on my palette. It's always nice if you can mix a little bit of paint together on your palette. It can, one, make you move a lot faster, and two, it actually can help tie the miniature together as you're not filling up everything, your palette and your miniature with so many different colors. Now the highlighting process can be very slow with each layer, but parts of the mini become more and more realistic, realistic as it starts to pop. This is why it's always nice to kind of push your highlights. If you can add one more thin layer on top of a brighter shade, then go for it. It'll actually make your miniature stand out, especially when it's at arm's length away. Now over time, I add more and more of a lighter shade of green to a dark forest green to make it brighter and brighter, which can also help with the highlights on the cloak light overall. It's definitely a relatively slow process, but if you can paint your layers small enough and cover less and less area of the miniature each time, you can really get an excellent contrast and make all those highlights and higher edges really show off. Now, naturally, it wouldn't be a regular painting project if you didn't have some mistakes. This is no different. So I actually started to skip over several steps and went straight to ghost white for the hair. Yeah, it wasn't very smart. I shouldn't have went straight to this shade of white, but luckily it was a relatively easy fix. I cover the white and I use a dark gray instead, which actually helped out a lot and made it look better in the end. If some of the white shone through, it wasn't too big of a deal as I was able to, of course, blend it in and make the hair look a lot more realistic. For highlighting the face, I use Kislev Flesh from Citadel for the highlights along with different areas of the hands to also use the same shade to help the face and skin stand out. Now with the majority of the body and cloak highlighted, I moved on to some of the gold trim and did some touch up work on that. Now with the body and staff completed, then I moved on to the icy blue stuff at Loki's feet. I start off with base coating this area with a darker shade of blue, and also I use the same shade as the blue for the orb on the staff. With most of my painting, I like to start off with darker colors, and that provides for an easy application of the highlights. However, you can use a lighter shade of blue and simply use a wash to darken it down and get the recesses, but I just find this to be a little bit better for me and my painting style. Now for the highlights on the blue, I use relatively the same process as before, adding in rather a lighter shade of blue or even some white to make the hue get lighter and lighter and be able to show off some of the areas and other aspects of the blue to, again, make it pop and stand out. 
Now, after doing this process three or four times, you can end up with some really nice highlights. And since this blue area does have some really sharp jagged edges, it makes for a relatively easy application and especially knowing where to put all the highlights. Now, once all the blue paint was dried, I moved on to the base, finished some touch up work on that and the miniature will be complete very soon. After a quick coat of gray, I used some black ink to line the cracks on the ground to help them stand out. Now, if you don't have any black ink, that's fine. Black paint will be used and can be used just as easily. Though if you use black paint, I would say keep it a little bit thinner than normal so it can easily seep into all the nooks and crannies and make parts of the base stand out. Later on, when the ink has completely dried, I use some cheap tan craft paint to make some dry brushing along with a very cheap makeup brush that actually served as a really nice applicator. Now, after all the paint is dry, it's time to zoom in for some glamour shots of the completed Loki. And there we have it. Loki from Marvel Crisis Protocol is now completed. I do hope you enjoyed this video and learned some ideas and maybe some inspiration to paint some of your own miniatures, rather from this game or any other game. If you liked this video, I would appreciate if you leave a comment or like down below. Tell me what you think. Is there anything that you would change or do differently with this miniature? And I would love to see what you have to do yourself or what you have done yourself. Thanks again for watching. This has been Mediocre Minis, and I shall return. Thank <laughs> you.